In Ian Fleming's early James Bond novels, 007 never actually drove an Aston Martin. No, it was a Bentley that was remarked upon as being his only real personal pleasure in life. With Bentley marking its centenary of 100 years, what better time for 007 to reconsider his next company car? Mr Bond, I humbly present for your careful consideration the new Bentley Continental GT, a beautifully sleek machine that appears far more athletic than its predecessor. OK, maybe turning up at Casino Royale Montenegro in such a vivid shade of orange isn't the most subtle way to go, but generally speaking this new Continental is really sculptural. The last car was a bit of a bruiser in terms of appearance. This is elegant, fluid, it's dynamic, it's got beautiful sharp creases, really distinctive grille elements and that GT sloping roofline that melts into a chiselled rear end. Whether it be wafting through the streets of London or arriving for an evening at a five-star hotel, this car wears its design with true disdain. It is a tailored suit of the automotive world. Now you can get a V8 version of the new Continental GT, actually something that's been really well received by the automotive media. But we felt 007 deserved the full fat W12 treatment, and that means under his right foot, he'd have 626 brake horsepower at his disposal and a colossal 900 newton meters of torque. And despite this car weighing nearly 2.3 tons, that colossal amount of oomph will get you from zero to 60 in just 3.6 seconds and onto a top speed of 207 miles per hour. Such performance is deployed via an eight speed automatic transmission which is silky smooth with really imperceptible shifts thanks to its dual clutch nature. And of course, an intelligent all wheel drive system which considering the very British weather today, I'm quite grateful for. Now straight line speed is one thing, but what if the world's most famous spy needs to give chase through the Alps? Well, thankfully, the new Continental GT acquits itself really well on the twisty stuff too, because despite its near 2.3 ton curb weight, it hides its weight magnificently. Active body control prevents the car from leaning all over the place. There's a huge amount of grip from that all wheel drive system that can send about 34% forwards to maintain front end grip. And the steering has this really nice, beautiful weighting to it. It feels substantial in your hands. It's not overly light. Now in comfort mode, this car is great for wafting away great big cross-continental distances in one go. The suspension soaks up all of the road imperfections. There's a nice amount of isolation in the cabin, keeping things quiet and serene. But it's actually in sport mode that you notice the biggest difference between this car and its predecessor. Everything tightens up. There's a new greater found sense of agility to this machine. And with up to 85% of torque being sent rearwards, it has a real nose positive way of attacking a bend. The brakes certainly deserve a special mention in this car too, because when you're whipping along at quite a rate of knots in what's, to be fair, quite a sizable vehicle, and you really lean on them, they are right there. The pedal is nice and progressive. There's a really purposeful bite to them. And yeah, they're amongst the largest iron discs you can get for a car at about 420 millimeters combination of secure road holding and immense amount of torque to fire you out of corners means that you cover ground at an incredible rate. Now one of the reasons this GT is so keen handling is because that W12 has been pushed right back into the car, keeping the weight off the nose and improving the overall weight distribution. But what about those times when Bond returns from a lengthy day of exercising his license to kill and he has that lengthy journey home. Well, I have to say the interior fit and finish is exquisite. It is right up there with the very best in the industry. And I think actually some elements actually put a DB11 to shame. You've got the beautiful bright work. This car has this incredible polished wood finish that just bows around the occupants at the front. And the stitching and leather quality is just absolutely sublime. It feels expensive. It has a real sense of occasion in here and it's, it's very unique. You couldn't mistake it for another luxury GT. Now, Bentley with its traditional wood finishes and things has had to step into the modern day and introduced a large touchscreen display, which I have to say is reasonably intuitive. Now the attention to detail in here is incredible with all the switch gear beautifully damped and covered in this nice metal knurling. So it's got a real texture to it. 
it feels like somebody has spent an awful lot of time on every tiny detail in this car, which is certainly something you appreciate whenever you are doing a lengthy grand tour. But what Bond car would be complete without its signature gadget? You see, whilst this is the large touchscreen display now, it's set on a triangular prism, a bit like Bond's DB5's revolving number plate. The push of a button can see the technology hidden away and some beautiful analogue dials in their place. And when you're done for the day and you turn the car off, everything is beautifully stowed away and hidden from view. Now the Continental GT is a 2 plus 2, meaning you can fit two people in the back as well. And while legroom is actually surprisingly good for a car like this, headroom because of that sloping roof line means that adults might struggle a little. It does have a decent sized boot that's been specifically designed with a wide opening to fit various bulky items such as golf bags or maybe even the odd Spectre agent in the back. Now a W12 Bentley Continental GT like this one costs just shy of £160,000 which we freely admit is quite a hefty bill for the UK taxpayer and MI6 to pick up. But we can't help but feel a return to tradition for James Bond and the opportunity for him to drive it with a bit of verve again on the big screen will leave everybody both shaken and stirred. Thanks very much for watching and let us know what you think in the comments below. Please subscribe for all of the latest and greatest cars to hit the road. For breaking news and written reviews, visit www.insidelane.co.uk.